Amen. Which strain at a net and swallow a camel. This is the fifth of eight, and everybody says, whoa. whoa. Amen. These are divine warnings in this chapter. Mint, aunts, and cumin are various spices. Now, when you think about a spice, you think about something real small, don't you? Amen. Real, real little. You don't think about spices being big. Amen. Like you might have a mint leaf, mm -hmm. but the actual mint is something very, very, very small. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of them were used for fragrance from time to time. They were also ground up and used for medicine. This really was not what God had in mind when he spoke of the tithe. In honor to God, all tribes except Levi were given land and were required to what? Tithe of all thine increase to the priest and Levites. The tithe, or 10%, is regarded as the offering due to the owner of the land. How many know God is the owner? Amen. Leviticus 27 and verse 30. Let's read. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Somebody say blind guides. All right. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Y'all know this. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. See, but they had gotten so technical. Remember this? The, the, the uh, mint, the aunts, the cumin. So they were looking at the smaller things when they should have been focusing on the weightier matters. They had got so technical with their performance, they had forgotten the purpose behind it. Y'all still with me? Amen. They were so caught up in technicalities that they no longer were functional as a church. I told y'all I'm not this smart, not this disciplined, but I believe God got us on a track of studying the scripture that revealed unto us some of our misfocus. So, some things we do, we focus in on the minors and ignore the majors. How many realize there's some stuff we just got to let go? And what COVID has done is pull the cover of a lot of stuff we were just doing. That's why we got to realize that some folk been leading us who actually was spiritually blind. Somebody say blind guys. Amen. I pray to God that I have not injured you. Amen. In the times of my temporary blindness. But I can see now. How many know 2020 is the year of spiritual vision and clarity? Amen. See, it would be like us getting so caught up in watching the clock and making sure that we did not run a service over time that we took no time to minister to the needs of the people. How can someone who's spiritually blind lead someone? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 14. Y'all stay with me? Let's read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What Jesus was trying to tell them was to stop worrying about formality and get the people into the kingdom. How many realize it's all about souls? It's not about who sit on the right side of the church, who sit on the left side of the church. That's why I'm trying to repurpose my speech. We are practicing, amen, physical distancing. Amen. I see y'all with your masks and your, your shields and everything else on. That's physical distancing. But we are some social folk. How many realize we got to practice social closeness? We got, we got to realize that God called us to be together. Because one can chase a thousand, but two can chase what? Ten thousand. You need to look across your physical distance and say, I need you to survive. I, I need you to say, amen. We are helpers one of another. 
Amen. The natural man can't lead us out of this. But spiritual people can help us overcome the darkness that's in this world. Anybody realize you got to let your light what? Shine where? Before men that they might see your good works and begin to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Y'all still with me on tonight? Somebody say blind guys. Don't worry about who does not, uh, who does it or how. Just get them saved. And then minister to them. In other words, don't worry uh, about who was tarrying with the person, who witnessed to them, who had the track. Because the Bible teaches, talking about folk that really see, one water, one planet, another water, but what? God give the increase. And you remember when I taught y'all, amen, about amen, how we should, amen, pray with our eyes open. So many folk got their eyes closed. You better watch what's going on around you. Amen. And then we got to learn how to share the gospel or witness without fear. And during those series of teaching, we shared with you that statistically, it's about the seventh time that a person hears the message before they even respond to the message. So you could have been number one, two, three, four, five, six over a period of years. And it looked like it wasn't working. But how many realize if God told you to plant it, plant that seed. Amen. God got somebody going to come by and water it. And it's not the one that planted, nor it's the one that water it. But it's who that give the increase. God. That, that's why you'll never walk into McCoy Temple. You'll never come into McCoy Sanctuary. I, I don't, you know, other people, they can do it, but it's not built on McCoy. Amen. It's built on Jesus. And any ministry that's personality driven and the person that the personality that's driven by is not Jesus Christ, that's a blind guy. Because all of us going to leave here one day. Anybody thank God for the truth? Come on and say blind guys. All right, let's go to Matthew 23 and verse number 25. Let's read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. I preached a sermon one time, extortion and excess. Amen. The uh, uh, contemporary vernacular, the young folks say, that's just over the top. That's just over the top. All right, let's go on to verse number 26. Read. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean. Also, my mother, a man who's a good mother, she taught me how to wash dishes. And she used the scripture to teach me how to wash dishes. You wash the inside first. Then you clean the outside. No, we didn't have... Uh, automated dishwasher. Would anybody ever use the dishwasher and it was clean on the out? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But it was filthy on the inside. Blind God. It might be convenient but how many know you got to get the Holy Ghost on the inside? And then it'll work what? On the outside. A lot of folk trying to clean folk, folk up on the outside and they filthy on the inside. But they taught me an old Pentecostal song go like this. Something on the... Yeah, y'all was in the same church I was in. It's working on the what? Outside. Oh, what a change in me. Amen. Somebody just thank God for what's working inside you right now. Uh-huh. Here Jesus was speaking of cleaning up the heart of man. Out of the issue of the heart, the mouth speaking. Oh, you be talking about, I didn't mean to say it. Your heart had it. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes God allows stuff to come out your mouth just to prove to you what's in your heart. Oh, somebody say, help me, Lord. Blind God. Some churches today believe that just being baptized in water completes salvation. This is not true. There are many people who have been baptized in water that are lost. To be saved, a person must repent, have a change of heart. His heart must be washed, what? In the blood of the Lamb and cleansed from all 
unrighteousness. He must truly believe that Jesus died on the cross for his sins and that he rose again. When a person is cleaned up from within, his old desire to sin, if he really got saved, is washed away. And the desire of his heart to follow, the desire of his heart to follow Jesus. That's why when we get them in the water, amen, we ask them, amen, have you repented of your sins? Hallelujah. And then we say, in obedience to heaven's command and according to the confession of your faith. I'm not baptizing you on my faith. Amen. I'm just baptizing you in obedience. You said, amen, that you're going to follow Jesus. I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Tide can't clean you up, but that blood will wash the filth away. Anybody thank God for the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans 6, in that we've been buried in the likeness of his death, we shall also rise to walk, what? In the newness of life. If you really have made a change on the inside, when I take you down in the water, you might go down dirty, but you're going to come up clean. Amen. But there's so many folk, amen, they went down and came up. And actually, they are a twofold soul ready for hell. Why? Because the person who baptized them didn't have no change. Amen. They baptized them in the wrong name. Hallelujah. And then you just got wet up. And then both of y'all on your way to outside. Somebody just say blind guy. Blind guy. Anybody thank God for the baptize, baptism in Jesus' name? Acts 2 and verse 38. Y'all with me? Let's read. Then Peter said unto them, what? Repent, Repent and be baptized. Who? Everyone. Every one of you in the what? The name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy. We don't baptize you, amen, to put you in the church. We baptize you so that your sins can be remissed. Amen. The Holy Spirit baptized you and put you in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some folk think because you've been baptized in the water, that make you a church member. No. All that do is make you, amen, a person who's eligible to be in the body of Christ. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15. Let's read. He that believeth and what? Is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Once a person is saved, you can quickly notice a change in his or her conversation, his or her habits, and his or her goals. How many know that the things you used to do? And now if you can't tell that, then I'm questioning your salvation. Yeah, I sure do. Places you used to go. I don't go there no more. And I know Mother Durant. That's how I used to be like that. Folk, Amen. When they got saved, it was a true change. Now folk get saved in the same club they were dancing in. They go right back to the club. Tell my God, know my heart. Mm. Amen. That's how come he died for your sins on a pole. He don't want you to be on the pole. Somebody say, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. In fact, the change will be so great, everyone will notice. Baptized in water is essential to salvation. But the baptism of the heart must take place first. Truly, the order of baptism is baptism of repentance, baptism of heart, baptism of water, baptism of fire of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of suffering. A lot of folk don't like to talk about that suffering baptism. But how many realize if you want to go to heaven, you got to suffer? Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Y'all still with me on tonight? You see that these Pharisees appeared from the outside to be living for God. But their hearts and spirits were not in it. Luke chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Let's just see how John the Baptist dealt with it. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be what? Baptize of him, all generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, 
and began not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up the children unto Abraham. I want y'all to hear me tonight. Hallelujah. I know we're in a period of evangelism. I believe God wants us to evangelize. But you got to realize evangelism is not just taking everything that comes. Evangelism telling some folks, you ain't ready for this. You got to get your heart right. You better get your mind right. I didn't call you a generation of vipers, but Luke chapter 3 said you are a generation of vipers. You're not just one snake. It's a whole bunch of snakes that's in your family, and all of them got to be delivered. Anybody thank God for the power of deliverance right now? Come on and say hallelujah. You want to really evangelize the neighborhood? Start casting demons out. Amen. Demons that have been generational demons. Demons that have been plaguing families. Hallelujah. You just want to get somebody wet up. You done took a viper, wet it up. Now it's just a wet viper. Amen. But when you a blind guy, you can't see no difference. Going right down where we baptize. So, well, you done baptize all these people. They still ain't saved. They don't have no power. Ain't no change in their life. They just been baptized. You don't waste your time. Don't waste water. Now with all this COVID stuff, you don't waste a lot of uh, cleaning supplies and everything else. You need to just go on and focus. Let people know you ain't ready for this. Uh, y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Hallelujah. But that's what John was saying. Who told y'all to come out here? This for folk who done changed their heart. If you want this, you got to want it bad enough to change. When I was tearing for the Holy Ghost, and I was tired because I was just being obedient. And when they say, okay, it's time, altar call. And if you was in a child when I was growing up, when it was altar call, you ain't had no choice. Amen. You were just down there on your knees. Cheat, 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 cheat. Cheat, cheat, cheat. And they'll let you stay down there a little while. Then the mother come and get up. You ain't serious. I'm, I'm like, why she gonna tell me I ain't serious? I'm, you trying to go through because she had a spirit of discernment. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, you know, the, the children who was really serious, then you get jealous. And say, can, can, can I go back down there? We be hollering, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, but then that's your jealousy that caused you to get down there. Amen. Oh, but I remember, and I'm just going, uh, you know, sometimes I tell you all these stories, but it's just how I got serious. Hallelujah. We in the Sunday school class, and uh, Mother Vice Lee Carr, you're teaching the Sunday school. Y'all remember them little cards, Union Gospel Press cards? You have the little cards, and the Sunday school lesson was on one side, a photo on one side, and you flip the card over. Am I dating myself? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Them little primary cards you had like that? And uh, one of the young girls, she didn't want to read her card. Amen. And when she didn't want to read her card, uh, the, 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 she, she cursed at the, in church, cursed right right at the, at the Sunday school teacher. And her daddy was the assistant superintendent. And he came over there and she cussed him out. Hallelujah. And, and the mother of the church, amen, Mother Fanny Giller, Mother Giller, if she had heels on, she still wasn't five feet tall. Hey Amen. The, the chair she sat in, my daddy had to cut about four inches off the chair. So when she sit down, her feet would touch the ground. That's just how short she was. Mm -hmm. hey Amen. But she was small in stature, but she had power. Hey Amen. She was sitting over in that corner. I don't know if you'd be sitting there just kind of rocking and praying. And when that word went out, she got up and she went over to her and she called her name, which I'm not going to call. And she told her, you better... Ask God for forgiveness. And then she, you know, went to her a week later. Wasn't even uh, maybe a little within that next week. The same girl had drowned in about two feet of water. Amen. The girl, you know, seven, eight, nine years of age, drowned. And it was at least 50 people that was all around. And nobody saw her go down. And that was a sad thing. But you talking about calling on Jesus? I saw prophecy in operation. I saw the judgment of God. And from that day, it was about three months, and I was speaking in tongues in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many know God will let stuff happen to you to let you know? Yeah. He'll reach you right where you are. Amen. Amen. You don't think COVID is causing folk to respond to the Holy Ghost? You don't think that seeing folk dying, people with money, people without money, folk going into the hospital, coming out, other folk from their bed. Don't even get to the hospital. Just lay down in the bed and don't get up. And the blind guy telling you this going to pass. I'm trying to tell you, you got to learn to deal with the judgment of God. And judgment begins where? 
Anybody ready for God's judgment? Hallelujah. Amen. If you're really ready, you, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, let a man do what? Examine himself. He said if we would judge ourselves, oh, good God of mine. We don't have to worry about the judgment of the world. Amen. You've got to examine yourself to see whether you are a reprobate. Amen. You better wake up. God is soon to come, and he's holding you accountable for everything that he done told you. Amen. That's why you got to make sure that your baptism is a real baptism. Now, I say this. Hallelujah. True evangelism. If you need to be baptized again, it's not like the first one ain't effective, but if you want to recommit yourself, we'll baptize you in the water in the name of Jesus. If you want to make a public statement, don't, don't fool nobody. Hallelujah. Amen. You done done things or acting in a certain kind of way. Amen. We'll baptize you. Amen. You say, where you get that from? Glad you asked. All right. Let's go right here to Acts chapter 19, verse number one. Hallelujah. Let's read. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, amen, and finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost? What? Since she believed, and they said unto him, we have not so much as her, whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto them were ye baptized. And they said, unto John's baptism. Had they been baptized? Yeah, they had been baptized in the same baptism that Jesus got. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And then Paul said, Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that ye should Believe on him which shall come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the what? Name of the Lord Jesus. So did they get baptized again? Hallelujah. When they came to a fuller understanding of knowledge, when they realized that they didn't have it all, did they get baptized again? Hallelujah. And after they got baptized again, verse number six, and when Paul what? Had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongue and prophesied. I'm not trying to tell you to be baptized. But I believe in this is a season. God wants you to make your calling and election sure. You better make a recommitment. Rededicate yourself. Hallelujah. Me and my, that young lady back there in that, that, that shield, in that mask, that pretty young lady back there. Amen. With that hat on. Y'all know who I'm talking about? That, that one right there with the head kind of tilt to the side. My the kind of pecan tan. That, that's about that woman right there. That, that's, <laughs> I'm just having a little fun. Hey Amen. We got 34 years. Thank God for 34 years of holy matrimony. Amen. And we planning this big soiree. You know, when we get 50 years of marriage. You think I'm going to wait 50 years to tell her how much I really love her? How do you think I'm going to wait for a rededication of ourselves? And, and what the renewing our vow? Uh-uh. Every time I see her, when I look at her, I'm renewing my vow. I'm letting her know, Lord, amen. I thank you for my wife. And I recommit myself in sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. If I'm using that for a marriage and that, what about your salvation? Do you rededicate yourself to the Lord? Do you present your bodies as what? Y'all don't like me on today. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is just your what? Reason. Don't wait to no special event to rededicate yourself. You make up every day. You make up. You say, Lord, I love you. And I thank you for another chance. Anybody thank God for another chance right now? Uh, that blind guy to make you feel like it's already done. Everything is okay. Uh-uh. The race is not given to the swift. Not a battle to the what? Strong. But those that what? Endure unto the end. Those are the ones that's going to be saved. You better hold out because the time has come. Hallelujah. When men will not endure. That, that, that's just what the apostolic taught me. Hallelujah. But they heat to themselves. Teachers. Having what? Itching ears. They said from such. Turn away. That's an evangelism too. I'm trying to help you. Amen. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Don't sit down and eat with everybody. Don't, don't, don't just be. I'm glad for this physical distance because it done taught some of y'all cut some people off. You just letting people just sit up and talk to you on the job, just come blowing all that nicotine in your face. 
Hallelujah. Uh -uh, six feet away. Stay on over there. You ain't had enough Holy Ghost to tell them get away from you. But God had to send COVID. Somebody say, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Certain places you were just going, you know you shouldn't have been in there. Hallelujah. Now you can't go in there. God had to remind you. Uh-uh. I'm just trying to tell you, sometimes you can act like you're blind. And God wants you to clean your glasses. I, I'm seeing the majority of us in here got glasses on. Mm -hmm. I think everybody but, but the babies, everybody got glasses. <laughs> everybody in here. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now I imagine some folk nearsighted, some folk far sighted. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I'm I'm nearsighted. So some, some some people got stigmatism, got all all kind of stuff. But uh, y'all know what it's like to try to wake up and be navigating. Don't have your glasses. No, don't you feel kind of messed up? You got to find them glasses for some, from somewhere, huh? Well, that's the same way in the spirit. Amen. You need your spiritual glasses. You need spiritual vision in order to see what is going on. Somebody say blind guys. All right, I'm moving on. Verse 27. I'm just excited, y'all. All right, verse 27, let's read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of what? Dead men's bone, and of all uncleanness. Once a year, about 15, uh, the 15th of the month of Adar, the Jews painted the tombs with whitewash to denote where the dead bodies were. Anybody know what that, that when you whitewash your fence, that kind of going out, you just get that paint, amen, and you kind of whitewash, you clean it up, amen, hallelujah. That's how some saints are, amen, you just whitewash, amen. If you know about whitewash, that ain't real paint, that, that's just something that just can make it look like it's clean, but amen, it, 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 it's really dirty, hallelujah. A lot of folk, you look like you're clean because you got your hat on your head, tilted to the side. Amen. With big feather in it and some flowers all around the brim and don't even realize the hat symbolized submission. And you ain't submissive to your husband. You ain't submissive to the preacher. You ain't submissive to the policeman. You, you, you just tell my, amen, I just look like I got it. Hallelujah. But how many realize if you ain't going to be submissive, take the hat off? That's what the Bible said. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. If you're going to play with it, amen, then why perpetrate? Amen. I was in New Jersey and I got some family members that are Muslims, Islamic, you know, and, and I'm trying to be kind, y'all. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, I saw a couple of my cousins with red beards and, you know, them dyed their beard and they younger than me, you know. And so the first thing I'm like, did the gray turn red? I'm trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. But it was just. You know, they, they look, look, so I inquired, well, what's the red beard about? And they said, well, you know, it, it, it ain't nothing. And when they said it ain't nothing, I said, mm -hmm, let me ask Dr. Google. So I, I Googled it out and said, why would a Muslim have a red beard? They said, because Muhammad said you should hide the gray and it's, you can paint your beard with all non, I mean, yeah, all uh, uh, Bold colors. So you can have a purple beard. You can have a red beard. Amen. I was like, you serving a God that's so vain that he want to color up his gray. Good God Almighty. You, you're serving a God that's just concerned about his beard. Now, you, you, you can color your hair. You can do whatever you want to do. But don't act like the, the gray not there. How many know if you color the gray, it's still gray? Blind guys, blind guys. Hey Amen. If you, you 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 tied up, cut it out, do whatever. You know you still got to deal with how old you are. Amen. Amen. Blind guy. <laughs> Y'all know I'm about to go somewhere, right? That's the Muslim. But when I'm standing there sitting with people and they have jet black and they older than my daddy, they, you know I'm trying to figure out who you fooling. Don't you know the Bible tells you that gray hair is something to be honored? Somebody tell him, thank you, Jesus. To be mature, you don't have to act like you're young. Be young. Hallelujah. But when you're old, be happy that you're old. 
It's good to mature in the kingdom. It's good. That's how David said, I once was what? Young, but now I'm. Y'all don't like me. How we, how we know you old? You don't look old. You color and everything. How, how we know you mature? You don't look mature. Amen. Certain dress go along with aging. Hallelujah. But you about to break your ankles trying to walk in them shoes. Your granddaughter, them her shoes. Let them shoes go. That's why you come to church with four and five pair of shoes right now. <laughs> See, y'all thought was y'all thought the whitewashing was a fence. I just use all those analogies to show you how you can whitewash right in the church. Amen. 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 It applied to all of us. Somebody say blind guys, blind guys. Y'all with me on that? See, probably from the world's point of view, the outside were the super religious. But it was all on what? The outside. Amen. All right, let's move on. Inside, they were dead men's bones. They were covering up their lust of the flesh with whitewash. To whitewash something today means to attempt to cover up something very evil. In our society today, we see this in preachers who lead two lives. One for the public to view and another for the private life that cannot stand under the light. Hallelujah. You want to know if you live in two lives? Amen. Check your history. Just go on right, right, right down on that uh, social media, whatever platform. Just check your history. Hey, do, the, do the history tell the story, Hello, uh, William? <laughs> and you be wondering why the bot. Amen. Why, why are you getting certain things? I don't know why this on my computer. Because you've been looking at certain things. Because you've been following and they studying your behavior. Now, if the, 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 the scientists and the the, the, the computer analysts, if they can track your behavior, I'm going somewhere. How many realize the devil can track your behavior? There are certain things he don't know about you. Amen. But when you go certain places, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. You stay there to look to know. They, they watch how, how you surf the net. Now, anything can happen up, but you about to have a David and Bathsheba experience. Amen. First of all, you should have never been up there on that balcony. You should have been on the battlefield. Amen. But you got so confident you were a warrior and decided you're going to let everybody, everybody else fight. How many know you got to save yourself? Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Being a bishop don't excuse you from prayer. Being a bishop don't excuse you from Sunday school. Being a bishop don't excuse you from working, amen, in the food line. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes, you do what God called you to do. I'm trying to tell you about them blind guys. Amen. Want to sit up there, cross their legs, and show their silk sock, and then tell you what you need to be doing. Hallelujah. Getting bigger every moment, not every year, every moment. Just sitting there, getting fatter and fatter because they don't do nothing. Amen. Telling me I got to have a bishop ring and all on my finger. Telling me where I got to have all of this. Yeah, you can go on and be having that whitewash on the outside, but for me, I'm satisfied to be uh, uncouth. I'm satisfied to be a bad nerdish. I'm satisfied to be on the outside. Whatever y'all try to, I'm satisfied to be that. But when it comes to laying hands, when it comes to walking in an authority, when it comes to preaching the word of God, then tell me what you think about me. Come on and say hallelujah. Anybody thank God for the truth? I'd rather have Jesus. Is it more than a soul? Than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than Richard. One preacher, they told him he had to have a bishop ring. And he told the saints to take their gold and melt it down because he wanted them to be a part of it. Some folk, I understand, even took the gold out their mouth. <laughs> blind guy, blind guy. Now, is that sinful? No, it ain't sinful. Is it unwise? I believe so. But if you're looking for me to ask you for your goal, in order to be feeling like you got a bishop, you're going to be waiting a long time.
Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Because I'd rather give you something than to be walking around here with gold on my finger. Amen. Just talk about, oh, you know, the bishop is in the house. Come and kiss the rain. <laughs> I'm just trying to show y'all what whitewashing and blind guys. Y'all still with me on today? All right. Living two lives. Let's go to verse number 28. Read. Even so ye also outly appear what? Righteous to men. Uh-huh. But within ye are full of what? Hypocrisy and iniquity. Now, I want y'all to catch the, 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 the parallel here. Somebody say hypocrisy and iniquity. Now, if I was doing a word study, I would just break out those two words. That will help you understand uh, what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is somebody who actually knows what right, but they try to present that they're doing right and they're doing wrong. That's a hypocrite. See, a man that don't know what's right can't be a hypocrite. Y'all got it? Somebody say hypocrisy and iniquity. All right? So this iniquity that go along with hypocrisy, that's not just the normal iniquity. That's that iniquity on steroids. That means for those who know and don't do, there are many strikes that God got for you. Because you should be helping other folk. But you're a hypocrite. And, and you should be, amen, trying to lead folk. But you're spiritually blind. You got charisma. You got an anointing. You got a gift. You're able to sing, teach, preach. People just hung on your word. You got it. You had it since you was a little baby. Man, you just attract folk. I mean, people just around. You stand up in your voice. Everybody's saying the same thing, but people respond to you. But now you're going to use that to make people think that somehow you got a relationship with God. And all you're doing is making merchandise of God's people. Somebody say hypocrites and iniquity. Y'all with me on tonight? Hey Amen. The church got to be careful. We done lied to too many people. We done fooled too many people. And God is holding you accountable for being a blind guy. That's why he said, hey amen, you will outwardly appear righteous. Hallelujah. But inwardly, you're full of, you full of game. That's all you are. You just game all the time. Wake up game. Then, and then the young folk, I believe, now this is my personal belief. I believe we are receiving the consequences of our walking away from God, but we also receiving the benefit of God's grace because you don't abandon the children. Now these children, they much smarter than you are. They ain't wise as you are, but they much smarter. They be waking up and come on, mama, you know that ain't true. Hey Amen. You don't even know the scripture. You've been teaching it, been quoting stuff. And you've been quoting what a blind God done told you. And the child done looked at it in the Bible and said, that ain't even no way in the Bible. Mama, come on now. You got to come up with something else. And then you talking about, well, you just better believe it. Why? Why, mama? It don't make sense. It don't make sense. You done told them why you smoking on cigarettes. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Blind God. If you can't show me how to live holy, please don't tell me how to live holy. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Didn't Paul say follow me as I what? Is this too tough? I'm so glad some of these churches shut down and I pray to God they never open up again. I pray that they never open up again. Because it's just fake. It's just foolish to hypocrisy and iniquity. All right, verse 29. Let's read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What? Hypocrites. Because ye build tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. I don't have time to deal with all of this, but y'all need to realize some people just worship the dead. Oh, the church ain't like it used to be. When the Bible says the church of God is getting stronger every day. He said, upon this rock, I'm a what? Build my, Build my church. I know they might be tatted up. 
I know they might not have everything you got, but God done put us such a favor on this generation that we're dealing with. And you don't even want them to be in church. Huh? And they're just holding you accountable. They're asking you all kind of questions, talking about, don't question God. Well, who am I supposed to question this? I don't question his motive, but if I don't understand, I'm going to ask him, Lord, help me understand. The Bible said we got to be ready to give an answer to every man concerning the reason of the faith. Oh, Bishop McCoy got an answer. Line by line, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We'll give it to you. Come on. You want to know why Muhammad got his red beard? You, you, you want to know whatever? I'm going to let you know. Ain't no sin in it, but I sure tell you. But I tell you, there's nothing greater than Jesus. Amen. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Y'all going to help me? Amen. Amen. Let's go on to verse number 30. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Amen. God been good to me. All right, let's read verse 30. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Amen. Verse 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye be the children of of them that kill the prophet. Don't let the Queen's English throw you off because we're going to get to it, kind of explain it to you. Verse 32, read. Fill ye up then the measure of your father. It seemed that these scribes and Pharisees, everybody say hypocrites, made large graves and mausoleums to say to the world that they were opposed to killing the prophets. Now they done killed the prophets, but they don't want nobody to think they killed the prophets. So they're going to begin to build these big monuments. It's about like these old hypocrite and politicians. Now when John Lewis was living, you couldn't even talk to him. You, 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 you didn't even accept him. But the moment that he dead, then all of y'all were he was a great man. He, he was dead. If you can't come to the church when I'm living, why are you going to try to make me some kind of great saint when I'm dead? When you're teaching and I get kind of response that I got right there, you know your, your, your message already there. I, 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 that's what I'm, somebody say, blind guys, blind. What good is it to, amen, gain the whole world and lose your soul? Don't be no hypocrite. Be real. That's why I like these young folk. Because they say, Bishop, keep it 100. <laughs> Oh, that's why I like them, because yeah, you just go straight at them. Now, they ain't going to always do, but they don't be talking about, well, you know, I don't want you to tell me the truth. They be like, tell me whatever it is. <laughs> I got this expression go like this. It is what it is. Everybody say, it is what it is. And it's not what it's not. <laughs> and it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, it happened because it was supposed to happen. Just look across your physical distance. You know what happened to you? What's supposed to happen to you? All things work together for the what? Good. Of the, it's how you deal with what happened to you. But if it wasn't supposed to happen, God wouldn't allow it to happen. But it was for my good. Come on and tell him thank you, Jesus. Y'all with me on tonight? Yeah, huh? These scribes and Pharisees had not only rejected the prophets, but they had even gone further and rejected the very Son of God. It's so easy to say what you would do if you would have had the decision facing you. Uh -huh. These scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, were quick to criticize, but they would make a much more serious denial when they participated in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Their cup of iniquity would be more than full. You done talked about me, my mama, my daddy, and everybody didn't gonna come to my funeral talking about he was a great man. He was just, you're a hypocrite. Okay, you know, I grew up in the 60s and early 70s, but they had an R&B song that I would hear other folk playing, not in my house. It called Backstabber. Mm -hmm. You smile in my face. I mean, you can... <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all 
must have heard it too. It wasn't in church where y'all heard it, right? But the church folk will backstab you. I'm talking about they'll come at you. Somebody say blind guys. Blind. That's why I tell people all the time, watch your back in church. Are they folk will smile on your face and be speaking in tongues while they gutting you. Verse number 33, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation? Now, I, I'm trying to, to articulate through my pedagogy on tonight the veracity of this text. This is not something that you should just think that, oh, okay, a blind guy. No. God is talking, he's calling the people who he had chose, who he had given the truth to, calling them a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Call them a generation of vipers. So I, I know it might seem harsh, but what I'm trying to do is be harsh and let you know you got to make your calling and election sure. This ain't no time to be playing. Check yourself. Huh? Yeah, y'all know how I go. <laughs> Because if you 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 might run, you're gonna run up on the wrong group, and God is allowing this. Somebody say, "Help us, God." These phony scribes and Pharisees were like the ones Jesus was speaking of that stand before Him at the end of the day, and say, "Lord, have not we done all these wonderful things? What in your name?" Hallelujah. Jesus would tell them to get away from me. I never knew you. You see, having a form of religion is just not enough. Our hearts are the judge. Were our hearts right with God? Was it the desire of our hearts to please God more than mankind? Do you really love him tonight? There are only two ways to go. Those who Jesus does not accept, they go into hell. To answer the question of Jesus above, there's a way to avoid hell. How many know there's a way out? Turn from this whitewashed outward religion. Quit playing church. And, and this is the way I just break it down. Anything you can't do in the church building, <laughs> don't do it outside the building. And don't tell me about everybody else and what they're doing in the building. I'm switching now in the teaching. I identify all the problems, but don't you focus in on the problem. Because the safest place to be is in the house of God. Amen. He that dwelleth in what? The secret. What you got to do is be in God's house and find a secret place. It might not be up at the pulpit. It, it, it might be under the pew. They might not recognize you. But there ain't nothing between my soul and my Savior. You're not going to hinder my praise. You're not going to stop me from worshiping my God. He's been too good to me for you to try to run me out my own house. Uh -uh. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. And I, they, I'm supposed to be here. And you can't do nothing about it. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know when God gives you something? Amen. It's yours. Come on. Somebody give God some praise for what belongs to you tonight. Now, you can do what you want to do. Amen. I was sharing with someone about some of the, the weaknesses of our organizational structure. As a church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have an organizational structure that's not built on secular business principles. It's built on godly principles. In other words, I could labor here a hundred years, but this building don't belong to me. It don't belong to my family. It don't belong to no man. It belongs to the Lord. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. That's why anybody who come along and take God's stuff and put it on their back, you better watch them. Now, in other reformation, other institutions, people will buy stuff for themselves. And it don't make sense. Why would you work in labor and go, I'm building it so somebody else can come along? No, they're going to have to work just as hard. You'd rather tear it down 
before you let somebody else sit on your furniture. That ain't godly. Oh, come on. Somebody say blind guys. Blind guys. Anybody want to live so that you can bless others that they won't have to work as hard as you work? Huh? That's what Christianity is all about. When I interact with you, I'm going to leave you with more than what I found. Hallelujah. When I just walk past you, you're going to feel the anointing come on. Because you know I came to bless you and not to curse you. I came to help. Anybody thank God that you God has placed you in the earth to be a blessing? Hallelujah. We're supposed to make the difference. But them blind guys got folk all just twisted up. Hallelujah. One preacher told me, hallelujah, how he talked to an individual and, and, and the Lord will fix it. So I ran to the individual and, and, you know, I didn't bring up the preaching. He said, well, you start talking about the man. And I'm going, whoa. He said, I don't want to see him again in heaven or hell. Now, you know that's something else. You know, he was injured. He was wounded. Good God in mind. So what I had to do is take the conversation from the church, the building, uh -huh. and start talking about the love of God. You know, you can love people and don't even have to mention God. Mm -hmm. Huh? People don't care how much you know mm -hmm. until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. What you doing here, man? We, we going to work on this car? What, what, what you going to do? We going to cut grass? We gonna, I'm going to show you how I love God. Hallelujah. Not tell you how much I love God. Somebody say blind guys, blind guys. Y'all with me on tonight? Hallelujah. So we got to turn away from this whitewash. I'm closing out here. Verse 34. There's a few more verses. Amen. Let's read. Wherefore, behold, I send you prophets and what? Wise. Wise men and scribes. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from sin. What, where is the scourging going to happen? In the synagogue. And you wonder why stuff happening in church. Because the Bible said it. Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Verse number 35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of the righteous Abel. And the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias. Amen. Whom you slew between the temple and... And all. what did Abel do to his brother Cain? Hmm. Cain killed Abel. But I just want to know, Abel didn't do nothing to Cain. It's just that God accepted Abel's sacrifice and rejected Cain. You mad with me because I'm happy. I'm trying to tell you them blind guys will mess you up. Folks trying to make you mad. Don't you know what they're doing? Don't you <laughs> Explain. I'm going to help you, sir. I really could care less what they're doing. If you get to the gas station and only get a dollar worth of gas and then you're going to run out, oh, that, that dollar, I'm going to fill up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill up at this gas station. Because I realize it's better. Anybody know a car ride better with a full tank of gas? <laughs> you don't believe it? Try it. Change the mentality. Quit going stopping it. Give it 38 cents. You know, you're just getting a little gas. You just come into church just to get a little touch. <laughs> oh, y'all got it. Come on and say hallelujah. You got the wrong mentality. You just coming in here just to get a little, just a, just a little bit, just to get you to the corner. Uh-uh, I'm going to stay till I start overflowing. Hey, Amen. Be spilling it all out. <laughs> the Lord said, that's enough, McCoy. That's enough. <laughs> Huh? I'm going to praise him. Anybody got to praise on the inside? Right? Hey, I got to get it out. I got to praise him. Hallelujah. <clears throat> One of the things this season has done is stop that hospital visitation. Mm -hmm. And going into the hospital, especially in the hospice, our palliative care is always very sobering for me. Because mm -hmm. you know you're walking amongst death. You know you're walking in, in areas where the doctors have said that nothing else can be done. And I'm looking and praying hard for God. Lord, give us a miracle. But now I can't even walk in the palliative care no more. Can't even walk in that environment no more. So death is just running rampant. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
Hallelujah. That's how come we got to pray more. Because we got to pray beyond the wall. We got to pray beyond the restriction. What we can. Some folks say because well, we can't go to the hospital, then you stop praying for the sick. You should be praying for the sick even more. Y'all with me on tonight? All right. Remember that they were religious people of their day, but it was the outward side of religion for sure. They had nothing good going on inside of them. They as a whole would not accept Jesus. It was not accepting him who was the perfect lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. It was as if they themselves had killed the prophets that led up to Jesus. Their message was of his coming. In not in accepting him, they did not accept their message as well. In other words, don't worry about who don't have Jesus. Get a good hold of it. There are folk out there who want what you have. They want Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Show them about Jesus. Folk want to get out of their situation. And Jesus is the answer. Verse number 36. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon what? This generation. Verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, thou that what? Killeth the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered the, thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. And Jesus here is speaking of them rejecting the Savior of the world. Jesus, But before I get to Jesus, even though we've been talking about Scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, and, and he letting you know there were true prophets among you, but y'all kept killing them. You, you, you kept treating them any kind. I would have saved your children if you had to let them folk alone. But you're going to make them feel like they're a cult. You're going to make them feel like it don't make no sense. Oh, you know, it must not be nothing over there because y'all don't have what them folk over there have. What you mean what they have? The, the, the preacher sleeping with any and everything, both sides. You know, they not only, you know, sexual, heterosexual, or homosexual, or bisexual, or trisexual. Y'all know what trisexual is, right? To anything. Just try anything. In Jesus' name. A nasty fellow gonna come tell you that he's anointed of God and he want to leave his seed in the earth. You should take the Bible, the Quran, and everything else and just throw it right at him. That's about the oldest game that you ever can run on somebody. You gonna come in the church and be a pimp, and then you want me to sit around and act like I'm gonna be sitting up doing with like we pimp at the pimp party with a big cup. And all that stuff. Like, no, I ain't, I ain't going for it. You're a hypocrite and lying thief. That's how come I, you won't find me in certain circles. Because I'm not going to sit there and just be a partner of foolishness. That's how come I don't get invited to certain things. Because I don't sit there quiet. That right there, that's wrong. Let's go in the scripture. Let's talk about this. Well, you know, you judging people. Trust me. I judged what clothes I was going to put on when I came in here because I, I was coming into the house of God. Judge me. I mean, trust me. I judged what route I was going to travel. So how in this world, when I get here, all of a sudden you want my turn off the judgment meter. Amen. The difference between clean and unclean. Huh? I'm a men speed stick man. That's what I am. I am a powder fresh speed stick man. That's what that's me. A lot of times they be running out, Elder Williams. I have to order mine. You know why I like men and speed stick powder fresh? Because it keep me from smelling myself. Now that's me. All deodorant don't work for me. I wish I had somebody that, that, that know what I'm talking about. You're going to let somebody call to sell you deodorant just because deodorant is supposed to. You better know yourself. You better know what you need. So I know what it takes for me. Because there's stuff inside of me that will stink if I don't put deodorant on it. I, I got to pray. I got to fast. I got to stay before God. 
Hallelujah. Because y'all don't want to see the stinking part of me. Oh, you act like you don't stink. You act like <laughs> you act like you ain't got no problem. Huh? All have what? And come what? You a blind guide if you think that you can stay away from the word of God and come up clean. You a blind guide if you think you could just take this old patty cake stuff and make it to heaven. Everybody telling you how to get a new house, a new car, telling you how to uh, do all kinds of social stuff. Hey man, what? You ain't telling me about salvation. You, I mean, I brought Lady McCoy in here 34 years and then all of a sudden I just showed up talking about, you know, the Lord gave me a new wife. And all y'all you know, just said, just have, oh, Bishop got a new wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think y'all got the message. That's what he was saying. You kill the prophet. You stone them that I sent to you. You make it seem like I'm judging you because the Bible says a man should leave his mother and his father and cleave to his own wife. Because the Bible said if I'm having problems at home, I should drop the mic. Amen. Sit down. Work on my family. Quit trying to perpetrate something before you that's not true. Blind guy. Blind God. Y'all still with me on tonight? They would not accept him. They went so far to crucify the Son of God. Jesus knew this when he made the statement and mourned for Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Verse 38, behold, your house is left unto you. Y'all know what desolate means? Jesus' foreknowledge had helped him to see the desperate thing that they would, would do and become totally separated from God. Verse 39, our final verse, let's read. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This means that Jesus did not appear to these particular people after the resurrection. At the second coming of Christ, when every knee shall what? Bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. These people will realize that Jesus is the Messiah. The Israelites have always looked for a Messiah that would be a physical king and save them from their neighbor. Jesus would be the Lord of Lords and what? King of Kings when he returned to the earth. They truly will say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of... In other words, you will be a believer. But just believe when believing is beneficial. I, I, I teach that in a series of lessons. You can believe, but you need to have the benefits of your belief. Because what good is it to believe the gun is real after you got a hole in your chest? Oh, no. oh. <laughs> Too great. Huh? Too what good is it to believe uh, that they really mean it after they done took you everything? Mm. Then you be talking about, I ain't know you really meant it. Believe me, Jesus is coming. And how many know you got to be ready? Anybody ready on tonight? Lift both hands to the Lord and say, even so, come now, Lord Jesus. I pray you meant that. I pray you really meant that. Hallelujah. All right. Any, any questions? Any questions on tonight's teaching? All right. For those who are on the conference line, we're going to open up. Amen. If there are any questions, amen, you can do that. Those who are in the feed, thank you so much for your comments. Amen. But if you have anything we want us to address, we can deal with that. All right. I'm going to run through these questions real quick. Amen. Question number one. The woes were spoken to whom? Scribes and the Pharisees. Very good. What were they tithing? The mint, the aunts, and the cumin. These were small spices. Y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Question number three. What were they omitting? The weightier matters. The weightier matters. Things that really matter. And what were some of the weightier matters? What? Judgment? 
Y'all remember that? Huh? I want y'all to get in the way of your matters. What, what are the way of your matters? Law, judgment, mercy, and faith. How I many know the law is important? <laughs> judgment is important. Mercy is important. Faith is important. What did Jesus call them when he said uh, they strain at a gnat and swallow at a camel? A blind guy. He's just a blind guy. Spiritually blind. Amen. You so caught up on these minors. You're swallowing a camel. And then you're straining at a gnat. Uh-huh. These people had gotten caught up in what? Technicalities. Very good. These blind leaders could be parallel to whom today? All right. The non-functioning church. You just having church, but you really ain't functioning in the kingdom. All right. What did Jesus mean when he had said they cleansed, cleaned the outside of the cup, but the inside was full of extortion and excesses? All right. They were not saved. Amen. Come on, y'all just help me. I'm just feeling pretty good. Just say too much, too much. <laughs> just too much, too much. Yeah, I just over the top. What Jesus really tell? I mean, what was Jesus really telling them to cleanse? Uh -huh. Amen. The heart. In other words, repent. All right. Question nine: What two things must happen for you to be saved? Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on now with that other baptism. Baptism of what? The Spirit. Yeah, you got that water baptism. You got to repent in order to get the water baptism, but you got to get the Spirit baptism. Y'all got it? What is the order of baptisms? Baptism of repentance, baptism of the heart, baptism of the water, baptism of the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of suffering. Very good. Uh huh. What were they likened to in verse 27? Whited sepulchers, dead inwardly, but whitewashed on the outside. Good God of mine. Now, to all my uh, black nationalist friends, this is a scripture you can use when they be trying to tell you that everything white is good in the Bible. <clears throat> See, folks just be lying. That's a, just be lying. Just be saying stuff. No, just ask them, say, is this good in the Bible, white? Just ask them that. That's why you got to know the scripture. Amen. Amen. In what they were full of what? Dead men's bones and of uncleanness. Very good. How often did Jews whitewash the tombs? Once a year. Once a year. Very good. What does whitewash mean today? Yeah, you're going to cover. You're a hypocrite. You're everything evil in society today. We see preachers who lead double lives. Let me move on because I, I got stuck there a little bit. How do these scribes and Pharisees think they were better than their ancestors? They were saying, had they been living, instead of their ancestors, they wouldn't have killed the prophet. You know, yeah. What was worse about the scribes and the Pharisees? I hear you back there. Uh huh. They would make a much more serious denial. Yeah, you talking about if you was back then what you did, but you're killing Jesus right now. You won't serve him, so you gonna tell me how much love of God you 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 a hypocrite. That's what you're doing. All right. What two names did Jesus call them uh, when he asked them how they could miss hell? Yeah, not just a viper, a generation. Oh, but you got a generation thing going on. That's why we got to deal with you. We got to get it out of you. For your children, your grandchildren, and all the rest of them. Cast that demon slap up out you. Amen. Verse number 8, I mean question 18. Jesus said they would be guilty of the blood of two men that covered Old Testament. And who were they? Abel and Zacharias. Very good. Question 19. What did Jesus compare his desiring to protect them with? As a hen gather her chickens under her wing, and he, he would not. Very good. Closing out. Question 20. What three words indicate Jesus' mourning for the, these this people? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Question 21. What did verse 39 mean about when they uh, would see Jesus again? 
from under the mask. That's right. He, uh, they did not appear to these particular people after the resurrection. Thank you so much. Question 22. What name would they call him? Messiah. All right. Question 23. What would they do to show? What will they do to show that they recognize him? That's right. Bless you. They come into the name of the Lord. Very good. So we are thankful to God. God is good. And all the time. Amen. We thank God for all of those who joined in with us. Amen. I want to thank God for Sister Pearly Williams from Lakeland, always blessing us. Amen. We thank God for Sister Nikia Clark. Amen. Uh, Lady Conchita Yan. Thank God for, amen, my cousin all the way from New Jersey, uh, Sister Lois, missionary, Lois Quarles. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for Sister Gloria Rogers from North Carolina. Thank God. Amen. For Mother Marie Frederick from Sorrento. Yeah, she tarried with me when I got the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank God for my cousin, Pinky. Sister, amen, Flora Singh. Amen. From New Jersey and Jamaica. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For Daniel Fells from uh, uh, Emmanuel Temple in Claremont. Thank God. Amen. Who else we got here? Uh, I see several comments. Amen. Sister Carolyn Poole. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for Sister Verna Jenkins. Thank God. Amen. For who else we have here? Sister Sharon Forge. Amen. I believe that's from Amen, Massachusetts. Thank God for all of you. So many. Amen. Don't want to take up any more time. But I just thank God for all those who, Amen, uh, joined in with us on tonight. Only what you do for Christ will last as always. If there's anything we share, Amen, that you need better understanding, reach out to us. Our contact information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Amen. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us by our website. Amen. We are here to, as a servant, and we love God and love you too. Good night, all. God bless.